The NFL Combine is over, so we finally have some concrete data, of course, besides the advanced analytics that we look at from guys' college performance, that should align with where draft capital is going to make these guys go, going to make them more valuable in fantasy football. So we're going to talk about today, who are the big Combine winners, and more importantly than that, who are the Combine winners who are actually good at some of the things that we look at here that have correlated the EPA metrics, correlating with NFL success in the past. Of course, didn't mute my laptop. We are already in an underdog draft room, though. Big board competing for 200 k to first place in this one. One. Of course, the preeminent pre-draft tournament out there, all the rookies available, I guess, besides Isaac Garendo, um, everybody else in here for the most part going to be available. And we're going to talk about them, about which guys should go up. The chat already, I could see Adam here dying, <laughs> dying to be talked about. And Justin here, here for the lad discourse. I mean, let's talk in general about everybody. So I think with this combine, one thing that is going to give you guys out there who have, you know, of course, talk about the chat. We talk about guys like Adam in the chat who love a lad McConkey out there. And, and to Adam's credit, we'll give him the uh, the victory lap here on stream for being right about lad being uh, much faster than people I think would give credit for a shifty slot wide wide receiver. Is he still good in advanced analytics? Not so much, but um, still, you know, again, the speed thing I think is the main thing that jumped out there. But in a combine where you had all these players testing really well. And of course, I've been in the bag for Troy Franklin a lot as my guy who I would think should be the wide receiver for um, concretely. I still mostly feel that way, but he had over an eight RAS score or, you know, RAS scores were done. And it's scores already in the S part of RAS. But point being is like he was over eight, but because we had fucking five, six, seven, eight guys all above a nine, all above a nine, five guys running Xavier Worthy running the best time at the, at the combine ever for the four, two, one forty. Uh, as a result, like all these guys are kind of going to be driven up. And then maybe as a result, none of them get driven up. I guess the other thing is they're all such good athletes, but I really think it's one of those things now where people are like, Oh, well, Troy Franklin, the big loser of the combine. It's like, dude ran a four, four, one was fast. Like he definitely weaved around the gauntlet drill and all of that, but it's still like, these are things that are defensible, especially when you produce as well as you did in college. And I think ultimately now people are going to be shifting towards, hey, here, Adonai Mitchell crushed at, at the combine and scored a lot of touchdowns in college, but still wasn't really good. He scored a lot because he had the opportunity. And I think for Xavier Worthy, he really didn't do much in college at all, but now he's the fastest guy we've ever tracked. So like they didn't use him in a way that used that speed meaningfully. They gave him a lot of kind of screen pass stuff. So for Worthy, like how do you properly grade that? I'm not sure. We'll talk about it, of course, over the course of this video. Two picks coming up here, um, a fine spot to go, well, fine spot to take two running backs that I do think make sense together. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be an RB picky here. This is going to be a dangerous game for me, but I think that the biggest winners are going to be the late wide receivers from the combine. I think their ADPs are going to come up. So I'm actually going to take two running backs to start, play the GIF. But of course, two running backs that I believe in the most at this range. But I'm in fact an RB piggy. I'm a sick RB piggy. I've been dying all weekend with the latest round of germs. So my second straight year of uh, being sick at home watching the NFL Combine. Uh, but I'm an RB piggy. Snout, snout, snout. I cannot live without running backs, et cetera, et cetera. Kyron Williams and Devon H. Han are the start, though. All right, let's see. Frank was more impressed me now than uh, before, for sure. I like him. I mean, look, he didn't do as much in the combine. Like, if he ran an AD Mitchell time, if he, let alone if he ran a Xavier Worthy time, we're now talking about him, I think. He, it'd still be hard to pass Romo Dunze. We're talking about him being in the hunt with Romo Dunze, I think. Um, with how he did it, it's just so silly that, you know, I guess it's not really so silly, but it feels kind of silly that, like, you know, point, point, what, one five on a 40 time is going to make the difference between you soaring up exponentially independent of what you did in terms of your uh, actual production in college, I think is a weird thing. But yeah, the biggest winners in terms of the speed score stuff, going to be A.D. Mitchell, and I Mitchell, going to be also Xavier Worthy. And then besides that, though, like you go through all the guys, like I was actually looking up Dylan Labe's RAS score because I was watching Peach stream briefly uh, before hopping onto this one. And um, like Dylan Labe had over a nine RAS. <laughs> so like every player who was in the hunt for anything useful here, besides fucking Bucky Irving, who had one of the worst RAS <laughs> things ever, profiles ever, um, everybody else did well. But then you also have a lot of guys where it's like, okay, they tested really well, but they didn't produce. So what's the issue there? What's the disconnect? And I still would tend to err on the side of supporting performance. But that said, because guys tested so well, there's going to be a lot of guys to get more draft capital. So that's the main thing I would say as a takeaway is like, I still think the stuff that we talked about, the things that we hit on that rookie video, you know, two months ago now, um, I think it'd be important for every position, but fundamentally these guys are now going to get better draft capital. And I would say for guys like worthy and Mitchell, these guys are now probably guaranteed first rounders, if not, you know, first, second cusp guys. And as a result of them coming up, a guy like uh, Troy Franklin could go down to the second round a little bit, even though I still think he's probably the fourth most talented guy overall, but that's sort of my summary. 
Lobby looked good. Yes, he, I mean, look, he looked fine. I think that he, um, you know, again, the athletic stuff was pretty good. I don't think he blew me away in anything. I was kind of surprised to see him be over a nine RAS, but, um, you know, like I, I think there, there really wasn't any big losers besides fucking Bucky Irving. Like even Audrey Estime, he ran a four seven two forty, which is egregious. Like if you watch his film, it doesn't make sense that he could run a four seven two. But his explosive drills were a lot better, which is the kind of thing you could rationalize there. But he ran a four seven two, and he was still over uh, an eight res because the guys are bigger now. And I think that's something too with res, you know, stuff where. Um, I'm sure it's accounted for in some way. The guy who's doing it, a uh, very big dork in a good way where you want these guys to be. Of course, I worked with Aaron Schatz of Football Outsiders at DVOA. And for whatever, you know, flaws there may have been, I think with my time there, uh, Aaron's dedication to being an obsessive dork over his data thing and trying to always make it better, trying to find ways to improve it. I was always there. I think the same thing for RAS. But like guys now are just so much bigger and doing things at bigger sizes where it almost feels un like unfair to compare them to guys 10 years ago. Um, more like Troy Franklin, I, I put it in the Splash Play Discord on Pete's the uh, Podcast Gaming Discord. If you're not a member, uh, posted a few just fun RESs. Ben Sinnott, a better athlete than Sam Laporta. You know that one's relevant. But like Troy Franklin's a better athlete than Randy Moss, according to RES. Now, does that mean that Troy Franklin's going to outproduce Randy Moss? No, but like it was like he's still 0.3 better. So like, what does that really mean? I think it just means that athletes now are a little better at bigger sizes. And fundamentally, that's not surprising. So I kind of think with the RAS stuff, I think there's a little bit of a, a a bad skew there with that just because of the fact that like it's changing so fast beneath our feet that you now have, uh, who's the guy who went viral over the weekend? Mims, um, who's like, a, I think a defensive lineman or an offensive lineman who's like six seven three forty and is like chiseled out of granite. And it's, you know, that's just what these guys are built like now because of both the things they could do in terms of clean stuff and things are maybe doing that are not as clean. Uh, we have Kyron Williams. We have Devon A. Chan. Um, I think that inherently with the bet on the Rams, Cooper Cup's going to make some sense here. And I do think he's undervalued overall. Team Cooper Cup. Uh, Drake London, some reports out there from the weekend that Atlanta, part of the reason they cut Johnny Smith is they really want to dig in on being a Viking style offense, consolidating target share for some of their key guys, including London and Pitts and Bijan, of course. So uh, Drake London being my pick here. I've liked him a lot at his 40s ADP. He's now coming up a little bit here. Uh, but I think for me, as a guy who took two running backs early, I think bailing out my wide receiver core, Drake London is one guy who I think could make a leap to be in the second round range next year. And maybe could outperform enough to get into the first round, but I don't. I feel like he wouldn't stay as a first rounder uh, next season. Same about Benson. Yes, Benson is another guy, by the way, that I think to me, um, I kind of want to reevaluate more so. And if you guys have guys in particular that you want me to talk about in terms of like what I think should change, because frankly, a lot of them I think I need to adjust my priors on. Benson's one of them. So the flaws with him only 0.01 EPA per rush, which is not that good. Basically net neutral. It's not negative. So that's a good thing, but it's only be a 0.01 in a Florida state offense. That was objectively good. Kind of weird. Benson though, in the past game, he didn't get a lot of work, only 6.8 routes per game, but a 0.29 EPA there uh, His avoided tackle rate is not fantastic, but not bad. 22% avoided tackle rate um, in the past game, a 25% avoided tackle rate. So pretty flat. Uh, he was okay in the red zone, 1.7 red zone targets a game. Uh, good for a 0.22 EPA in the red zone. So Benson being as fast as he was, I think he probably is a top back off the board. I think Audric has to be a more appealing runner. I think if you combine Benson's physical, you know, profile with what he put up there with how Audric Estime plays, we're talking about an easy number one back in the class, but instead Audric Estime is a little bit slow. Benson is fast. I think the fast guy wins out at running back. So I would say Benson to me, most likely to be the top running back off the board. Uh, besides that, Jalen Wright is another guy that I think I have to adjust my priors on a little bit. Um, thought he was okay based on some guys. Justin Herzig, I'll give the first credit to as a guy I saw touting Jalen Wright out there. Um, what I liked about him, a 32% avoided tackle rate, 0.14 EPA per rush, was not positive in the past game and also didn't get a lot of touches overall. Only 13.4 opportunities per game for Jalen Wright, so... He was splitting worth, uh, work with Jabari Small and I think somebody else there. Um, so that's the cover for him. But just any time the guy in college didn't earn a ton of touches, and you don't know how he did at 20 touches a game, that kind of gives me pause. But he was fast enough, so we're going to go with him. 32% uh, avoid tackle rate, mentioned that. Uh, negative 0.1 EPA on pass plays. So not a speed guy um, who would actually play well in the pass game. But I think for Jalen Wright, he's another one that I really did want to update my priors on and make sure to point out here because I took him a little bit in some drafts, as you guys saw last week, uh, but not like one of my favorite guys. Uh, I think that he should come up a good amount. 
Marshawn Lloyd, a guy who we did like a lot on stream here, analytically, probably one of the better backs in the class, though he also suffered from not getting enough volume. Only uh, for Marshawn, 12.3 opportunities per game for him. Uh, so he's right in that range of Jalen Wright that I critique. So I should critique Marshawn Lloyd the same way. But a 37% avoid attack rate for him on run plays, 85% on pass plays, only 1.7 targets a game. So it's not a huge sample there, but still 85% avoid attack rate doing anything like it's going to stand out to me. Um, so Marshawn Lloyd, I thought was a winner as well. The fact that he graded out at good size, also really good speed for his size. And he's a little bit bigger too, I think was a, a win for him. Um, do you think Bucky Irving is going to come down? I'll have, I'll happily buy the discount on Bucky Irving. Still think he's very talented at running back overall. Um, other running backs to note Braylon Allen. I don't th think was that special. Actually don't recall. I think RAS was down. I was checking Braylon Allen's score. Let me just check him real fast. Braylon Allen, definitely big enough to be useful, but I, if he's not a great athlete at big, at a big size, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Braylon Allen. Picking up in a little bit here. Uh, just to give the team a quick read, Kyron Williams, Devon H. and Cooper Cup, Drake London. But obviously we're talking about uh, the combine here a little bit more than focusing on the draft. So give me some, some grace on that. Um, all right, it's not loading for me. Somebody give me Braylon Allen's RAS if you know it out there. Am I misspelling his name? I feel like RAS is just like a little bit janky. Uh, the site, if you're not familiar with it, RAS.football is one that you see all the social media screenshots for. Um, it's not generating an image for me for Braylon Allen, so I can't find Braylon Allen's numbers right now, unfortunately. Um, his, his RAS numbers. His regular numbers, as we talked about, not the most impressive. 0.05 EPA per rush and a negative 0.09 EPA per target, so... Uh, pretty mid in terms of just the actual production. Uh, where is my, oh my God, where's the screen? All right, here we go. On the clock, ticking away. Uh, Terry McLaurin, again, a guy I think is going to benefit from whatever happens in Washington, whether it's Drake May, whether it's Jaden Daniels, whether it's somehow Caleb Williams. Terry McLaurin is going to be my first pick here. Um, anything else I want to take at this range? Really can't afford to do running back again right now. In terms of guys, I think Brian Thomas has to come up. Brian Thomas is the preeminent deep target in this class. I think relative to George Pickens and an Arthur Smith offense, Chris Godwin with Mike Evans now uh, definitely coming back. Two-year extension for him. Uh, Brian Thomas is going to be my pick here. His RAS scores, the target we talked about, target share was not great in college. Only 23% target per out run is not a good number to see for a guy. But he was playing with Malik Neighbors, who had a 31% target per out run rate. And Brian Thomas was also incredibly efficient. 0.63 EPA on overall targets, every target he had. 0.55 EPA getting targeted out wide. 1.7 EPA downfield is really crazy. That would be better than Neighbors, better than Marvin Harrison. Uh, slightly worse than a Taj Washington, but at more volume. Uh, so for Ryan Thomas, I think that on a team like this one where we're trying to just cobble together wide receiver a little bit later than we'd like to, I think all these guys are undervalued. Cooper Cup, again, was a first-round value last year. Don't think the situation's changed that much besides him getting older and being a little bit more of an injury risk or perceived to be. Uh, Drake London, again, think he's in an ascendant offense. Terry McLaurin, think he's going to have to be in an ascendant offense because of the QB play and not the offensive coordinator. And uh, Brian Thomas, again, just uh, crushing it at the combine. Great size uh, for a guy who's a downfield target. I think that he was also a big winner, but because of the fact, again, that Mitchell and, and Worthy were so fast and also, you know, a little bit faster, like Brian Thomas ran a 4-3-3 or something. Like he was crazy for his size. Like he, he should be getting a lot more uh, plaudits than he did. And I'm somebody that has had questions about him because I think when you have a bleak neighbors on the field drawing targets, like it's going to be easier to succeed downfield. Like 100%, that's going to be the case. But I think he might be good enough on his own. And the athletic testing is like absolutely crazy. Um, let's see. Any defensive players that wowed you? I couldn't care less. <laughs> I don't I don't track defense other than on a team level. Didn't do a 40, so Al didn't qualify for an RAS. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Jeff, always a reliable hand in chat, and I appreciate that very much. The guy with three running backs to start the draft. Oh, nobody did that here. I got two. We got some two firsts. I like the start though. Like if, again, I do think that if you're going to take two running backs early, don't love the bimodal early running back. Cause you are losing a lot of potential wide receiver capital. Like for me taking two running backs here, I missed out on four, five, six, seven, seven wide receivers there, 13, uh, 16, 19, 21. 
miss out on 24 wide receivers by going RB, RB at the turn. So you miss out on a lot of potential upside wide receivers if you go running back early, but I think we managed it well. And if I'm going to miss wide receiver for the two guys, I think that Kyron and A-Chan are the two that I would take that risk for uh, just because of the, you know, there is some downside risk for both. As we talked about, I think Kyron Williams would benefit from having like a Dylan Ma baby, a pass catching back, taking some of that work away from him. And I also think that an A-Chan probably, I mean, he wasn't a great 20 touch back at A&M his last year of college. So I think for him, I don't know that he should be a 20 touch back. I think he's probably most efficient at 15, uh, 15 to 18, maybe at a max. So those are the flaws for A-Chan. And, and frankly, most of it might be the starter, like for the most part next year. So I think those are the biggest flaws for those two guys, but. I'm happy to get him here. Poophead takes Kyle Pitts. Poophead just finds a way to take guys that are much more logical for me. Is Kyle Pitts' ADP up? Or did he reach for him? Yeah, was, okay. He reached for Kyle Pitts 13 spots of ADP. So I really, again, guys, in the future, when drafts randomly start, when the stream randomly starts at 1055 instead of 11, just keep in mind, these are the, these are the reasons why. Setting up a nice Atlanta stack. Um, Atlanta, by the way, does seem like Justin Fields less likely to go there. The Raiders seem like the one that a lot of national reporters are keying on for Justin Fields. Uh, for Atlanta, it seems like they want to take a shot at, uh, at Kirk Cousins. Seems like their number one priority. And then after that, um, we'll see. I think McCarthy is still very much alive for a Falcons fit. Uh, Kirk Cousins, you know, think I think likely to stay in Minnesota, but it does seem C Kevin O'Connell had an interview during the combine or like, you know, was on the studio for a while. It was talking about Kirk cousins and how like, Oh yeah, you know, we have to let him do his free agent process. And, you know, we're like kind of seemed like a thing where they're both going to see what they can do on the other side, maybe. Um, but I still think Kirk cousins comes back to Minnesota. Piss is going to steam. Unfortunately, and he should, I, I mean, he should in general, I don't think he should right now in my particular stream after a combine where, other people are going to get steamed up. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. 0 2 four, zero here. Of course, we have our two running backs. <clears throat> Again, don't think Justin Fields going to Atlanta is as likely as it seemed last week. Uh, betting markets, by the way, feel like really off on some of this shit lately. Uh, this is an ugly pocket. Wide receiver is getting bled out. Who's coming up? Take it out, Nye Mitchell. I'm just getting, I'm taking a guy before he's going to rise. I, with his size and his speed, I don't think there's any way he doesn't come up 30 spots in ADP. So in a wide receiver avalanche, we're going to take him here. And then we are at five wide receivers. None of these guys really do it for me at running back when we have the two that we have. Fields doesn't do it for me. Just a lot of uncertainty about where he's going to go. I'd rather take him if I had a Devontae Adams. I'm going to take Jamison Williams here, pick 98, or he's at a 98 ADP. I'm taking him at pick 85. Uh, but I think he adds a little more upside here. I think we have some okay floor guys with Cooper Cup, Drake London. Now I want to stack on some guys who are better in best ball. Team so far, Kyron Williams, Devon H. Chan at running back in our two early running backs in a row. Had to pass up 24 wide receivers basically to take them. Uh, but we did take both guys here that we like a lot. Cooper Cup, Drake London, Terry McLaurin, Brian Thomas, Adonai Mitchell, Jamison Williams, the wide receiver room. Again, spike week, guys. Jamison Williams, most recent reports for him are that he's going to get a real shot with the wide receiver two role. And with that assumption last year, he was going to the 50s. So uh, taking him in the 80s right now, I think good. And I think if there are positive camp reports for him in July and he's running with the starters, I think you probably see him come up again to where he was last year. Uh, maybe a little bit lower, but I'd say the 60s at least. Fields the Steelers. Sounds like the field, uh, the Steelers are going to run it back with Mason Rudolph and Kenny Pickett in a QB competition. Could be a smoke screen, uh, but I don't think that that's... I haven't seen anybody reporting differently about that one. Fields to the Raiders were the most recent reports that I saw. Apparently not a lot of blockers there to keep him from going to the Raiders. Um, besides the fact that this offensive coordinator was the offensive coordinator for Chicago. So I guess you could make that being a critique and you could say that like maybe Fields doesn't get a starting spot, but I, I find that hard to believe. The rookies are good enough though. Like JJ McCarthy, I think will win over a lot of people with what he did at the combine as well. Just showing up to compete was a big thing. I talked about that where, you know, Caleb Williams being there talking to people like that's still a good sign compared to a Jane Daniels who like him leaving and not getting measured was kind of a weird combo of things for him uh, to be doing there, especially, you know, when it is a pretty close competition with him, uh, Drake may, and then, you know, Caleb Williams, I, I think he's, I think he's a better fantasy prospect than Caleb Williams, but I don't know that he has a realistic shot. Jane Daniels does to be the number one overall pick, but did seem like bad, uh, bad marketing for Jay Daniels' draft capital. And it wouldn't shock me. I don't think it's the correct thing. It wouldn't shock me if JJ McCarthy flipped him. Like if you, if you're in a state where you can make bets on draft markets, I wouldn't hate the idea of 
taking May, like something where you're obviously Caleb Williams being number one. I don't think you're probably getting uh, any profitable bets on that one. But J.J. McCarthy, three, Drake May, two. You can even make the case for McCarthy being the second QB off the board for some team's eyes, potentially. Uh, but I, like, obviously, I don't believe that. But I think some team can fall in love with them. Does that mean go third overall in New England? I still think New England trades down. Uh, they've said a little bit more about taking a QB there. But I kind of think there's smoke screening. I just think there's enough people there that are carryovers from previous uh, New England regimes that, like, you don't change everything with that overnight, I think is the main thing to me. So, uh, I don't know. Like, I'm certainly, you could talk me in either way on that one. Uh, but I think that Harrison, I don't know. I still think Harrison of the Cardinals makes the most sense. Or somebody trades up and gets Harrison. But I think if you're trading up to number three, you're probably trading up to get uh, one of the QBs would be most likely. Now, Lenny, are you just the most toxic human being in the world? I said SB, SB still had an over an eight RIS score. Well, like, get, just get out of here. You know, Lenny, I just don't have the, I'm not in the mood, man. I'm putting user in timeout. Lenny, fucking be a better human being. <laughs> just not in the mood, man. I've been sick all weekend. And Lenny, who, by the way, if you're not familiar with Splash Play, Lenny's big claim to fame and uh, is that he victory lapped Christian McCaffrey being a good pick in the first round last year. Uh, so this year, apparently, we have to dunk on me for being ahead of the curve enough with data, making a popular pick that then pretty much everybody around the industry tailed me on. And then the guy still has a good athletic profile. Like, fuck off, Lenny, dude. I don't need the toxic bullshit, man. Not, not going to happen on Splash Play. And then toxic comes from me, and that's it. <laughs> Nobody else. 0260. We need some QBs. There's maybe a faint logic in going Tua with the, the bet on Miami, but I feel like taking a I don't know, man. This might not be a pocket for QB. I think I'm gonna go Jalen Warren here for one pick. I'm gonna really solidify running back with another young ascendant running back for myself. Keon Coleman, bad combine. We I wasn't in on him, so I don't have to make the defense, but uh, but that's it. Okay, this might be a spot to take two running backs. Kind of think there's a shot that Caleb Williams gets paired with a Brian Thomas or a Romo Dunze, I think is most live though. Dunze might have played himself up a few picks in capital because uh, the Bears have to take him at pick nine. But I think Caleb Williams was somebody who's one of these rookies coming up being the wide receiver too, they add to DJ Moore, I think is a very live outcome. So I'm going to take Caleb Williams and Jalen Warren. I should give the teams a read. All right, Caleb Williams at QB, Kyron Williams, Devon A. Chan, Jalen Warren, Cooper Cup, Drake London, Terry McLaurin, Brian Thomas, Adnai Mitchell, and Jamison Williams. We have no tight ends, and our first QB is Caleb Williams. So some things you can critique about the team for sure, but I feel like we can make enough up at QB late and hopefully find some correlation. Drafted any of the old running backs? I don't mind them. I think they're in a tough game of musical chairs with uh, just the jobs that are out there and what's going to be available and how they're going to price themselves. Uh, there were some reports out there that the expectation is that Saquon and Josh Jacobs are going to try to get over 10 million and they think it's going to be a lot harder to get that 10 million. I think it was an athletic report where they were talking to GMs or whatever. And one of the GMs is saying like, I'd rather have any of the guys in the $6 million range, which they anticipate being Derrick Henry, uh, Tony Pollard. It's basically guys getting paid what, uh, what Miles Sanders did last year, which was the best contract out there. Uh, so I think there's a chance that unless Barkley and Jacobs really drop their price tag and probably go back to their team. Like I think if, if Saquon did a two year deal, 9 million each for the giants, they'd probably take him back. Uh, same thing for the Raiders with Jacobs. Then those guys probably go back, but otherwise I don't know. They're going to find their, their price out there. So I would rather have Pollard. I'd rather have Henry. I'd rather have, um, trying to think who else would be, there's one other dusty one out there, but Saquon to me, like a terrible price, even at 43, I, it's been a terrible price where we've seen him go in the teens. Uh, it's still a terrible price in the forties. Uh, he really might be left alone with the dance. Jacobs. I think I like a little bit more cause he's still, he's still a back that I think will get, we'll, we'll find his depth in terms of the contract that he wants to take and the opportunity he gets, but you know, we'll see. How dumb is that Jonathan Taylor contract going to look next week? Yeah, I mean, I think they probably knew that going in. They just had to do it for the sake of that team and whatever. And, you know, it wasn't a good contract when it started. Uh, they just had to pay it to get him in so they could finally move on, I think. And they also basically, nobody wanted to trade anything meaningful for him anyway. So, um, though they did have some crazy ass reportedly of them, like wanting Jalen Waddle from the Dolphins. Um, I don't know what they wanted from the Rams in those reports. Uh, but, you know, I think that 
running back's really interesting this year because I think the rookies are good enough. I think a lot of the second year guys are good enough too, where if you're Cincinnati, you could add somebody with Chase Brown. But like from what you saw from Chase Brown last year, I'd, I'd give him a go. Um, you can even make the case like they could bring back Mixon. I don't think contract wise that would work. Uh, but with Benson running well, with Labe even showing some athleticism, like I think there's enough guys at running back now um, that you can make the case they're going to find spots somewhere and for much cheaper uh, than like a, a Jacobs or a Saquon would want. I think Marshawn Lloyd goes into a pretty good role. Uh, but we'll, of course, now I'm sure somebody's going to take him <laughs> the next few picks. Drafting enough old players for everyone. Look, I don't mind the old wide receivers a little bit uh, more. I think that they're, I think to me, they're a little bit more appropriately priced for where they are uh, compared to some of the old running backs. Uh, but obviously, you know, we will see. Also, I haven't pandered for anything yet, but our picks coming up, guys. So please do uh, subscribe down below. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. Again, we're always fighting off against the trolls and the nonsense here on the channel. But I show up every day. I do the stream. It's always a promise here. With the best info I can possibly provide to you guys. So please uh, join us on that journey here and hit that like button and subscribe. All right. 1360 here. Schultz can move in free agency. Stafford makes sense for this team. Let's take Stafford as one of our picks. Not going to get too cute. I still worry about Stafford's health overall, but uh, when you have Cup, when you have Kyron Williams, you're already making the bet on Stafford indirectly anyway. Um, Dalton Schultz, I just don't think lands. I don't have the confidence on a landing spot here. I think his best outcome is going back to Houston. Uh, Chuba, I don't mind. Roshan, I guess we're making a little bit of, on Chicago here. We'll take Roshan as well as our RB4. Team so far, a 2 4 6 0. Caleb Williams, Matthew Stafford, Kyron Williams, Devon A. Chan, Jalen Warren, Roshan Johnson, Cooper Cup, Drake London, Terry McLaurin, Brian Thomas, Adonai Mitchell, and Jamison Williams. I don't hate the team. I still think Adonai Mitchell, not the best target for me. Just he didn't do enough in college for me to feel confident. Only a 23% target per out run rate, which at a, for a 6 4 guy who's as fast as he is, like, what's the issue there, really? Um, 15.5 intended air yards per attempt is obviously good to see him getting the ball downfield, but like, is that repeatable in the NFL to be that deep of a target and expect to get more targets? Kind of don't think so. Um, 3.334 EPA per target is actually pretty good. It's just that in this class, it's not as good where you have neighbors at 0.65 Harrison 0.43 Odunze 0.44. Uh, Leggett 0.52, Johnny Wilson 0.37, Troy Franklin 0.7. So that's the issue. It's like Adonai Mitchell, I think, compared to other guys in the class, not as good analytically in terms of the EPA metrics, but still somebody that obviously was a positive player. So maybe should hold that against him a little bit less. Downfield is where I have the biggest flaws with him. So he got 2.2 deep targets a game. And I think Quinn Ewers was a good QB. Based on the numbers that I looked at here, he was adding value with what he did. So I don't want to blame him. But 2.2 deep targets a game, 0.25 EPA on his deep targets. So uh, actually these are throws past the sticks. So really not good adding value past the sticks downfield. It's a little bit better. A 0.6 EPA on throws of 20 plus air yards got 1.6 of them a game, but it, you're talking about a guy who's fast and big and he's a better EPA receiver on throws under 10 air yards. Like something doesn't track there. So that's the issue I have with Mitchell, but I think he's a better prospect than worthy uh, worthy for his flaws. So he earned more targets than Mitchell, a uh, 29% target per out run rate, uh, but he did get only 9.9 attended air yards per attempt. So a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage and also a 0.12 EPA per target. So still positive, but like not that great overall. Um, again, especially compared to guys like Harrison or Dunze, four times the player um, in terms of those metrics, in terms of adding value above average. Um, besides that for Worthy, so Worthy as well, only got 1.2 deep targets per game and a point, uh, let's see. No, excuse me, 1.5 new targets a game, 0.3 EPA. So also not good downfield. So I guess the, it really comes down to like, do you think that Quinn Ewers completely ruined these guys? Or do you think that Quinn Ewers did the best he could? These guys were still not great downfield. I don't know, but I kind of think that there's, it's baffling to see guys be that fast and that, you know, be testing like within the top one percentile of guys ever. And they didn't do anything downfield in college. Very odd to me. Pick 112 for Lad is something. Yeah, Lad coming up here. Uh, again, Lad had a good combine as well. I I kind of think, and I don't want I, mean, I want to go full guy full converting to our guy Adam here, who's been the one making me talk about Lad McConkey a lot of the last few weeks. I think Lad McConkey is a better prospect in some respects, definitely than Worthy, um, and I think more than Mitchell too. 
I, but not so I put in lads 2023 numbers here so I could just kind of look at them because he did not get knock it targeted enough last year uh, to make any of the top 200 receiver things that I pull in data wise. Uh, 26% target route run rate for lad, which is okay, not great. 0.42 EPA is again pretty good, a little bit less good than some of the other guys. Um, definitely better in the slot than out wide, a 0.18 EPA out wide compared to a 0.78 EPA out of the slot uh, for lad. And then downfield, he sucked. Uh, 1.2 deep targets a game, uh, good for a negative 0.001 EPA. So basically, uh, didn't add any value to his downfield targets. Um, this is, again, 2023 data for him because he didn't do enough last year. Uh, let me make my picks here, and I'll continue going off that. Um, I'm still happy to take Lloyd Nestime. Uh, again, they didn't have the smash combine like a Benson did. Uh, but Estime proved enough athletically. He's definitely going to come down draft capital. Lloyd, though, I think could come up. So 2660. And I feel okay with that. Caleb Williams, Matthew Stafford, Kyron Williams, Devon H. Han, Jalen Warren, Roshan Johnson, Marshawn Lloyd, Audric Estime. Finally, I can get the guys I want because they weren't as fast as the gazelles running against them at the Combine. Uh, Cooper Cup, Drake London, Terry McLaurin, Brian Thomas, Adnai Mitchell, Jamison Williams. There we go. Also, I can really feel myself being congested, so I apologize to you guys here that uh, you're hearing me be snottier than usual. But uh, this is the name of the game here. Name of the game. I don't follow the Bills media, but I should because I think they like Troy Franklin. Uh, they probably don't like him as much as they did before. I think that Troy Franklin, probably for some teams like the Bills, I think Franklin might have gotten passed by uh, Brian Thomas for that spot. Just because Thomas is a little bit bigger, uh, and a little bit younger as well. Um, so I think for I think for that, that's definitely the one thing for Troy Franklin that he's probably not going to get that spot for the Bills. He's probably not get the top outside receiver spot. But he can still get Kansas City. Like Kansas City now, the Mike Evans thing, you know, quietly, I don't think KC was ever really in the hunt to get Mike Evans. But it's been rumored long enough that I think there's, you know, some smoke there. You kind of have to think about it. Not getting Mike Evans now, you know, that's one less guy outside this year who they maybe would have had be the replacement for MVS who they already cut. So you got to think the Chiefs are going to go. They're either going to go real deep dumpster diving in free agency for like a Terrence Marshall type, or they're going to go in the draft and take one of Brian Thomas, one of Troy Franklin, whoever's available when they pick. Um, maybe a lad McConkey as like an elevated version of Sky Moore. Uh, Ricky Pearsall, I think, would be an improved MVS for them, though he, Ricky Pearsall, uh, not a great target earner is like the big flaw that I was looking at the data over the weekend. Um, also, just in general, um, I did bold guys on my sheet for guys that I would say tested well enough in RAS that I think you should treat them like they're going to have good draft capital. Uh, Marvin Harrison, uh, obviously, we're just assuming that anyway. Romo Dunze, Malik Neighbors didn't test, but he'll be fine. Uh, Malik Washington, Adonai Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, Lad McConkey, Troy Franklin, Johnny Wilson, by the way, at 6'7", very good athletics for him. Um, very good RAS for him as well. Uh, so I think Johnny Wilson going to get drafted, though. We'll see. Um, he does, does want to play tight end for sure. So going to be drafted as a wide receiver. Uh, Xavier Leggett, very good combine. Our guy Jeff pointed that out a lot. Of course, I've been big on Leggett as well. Copped him to A.J. Brown. So it's nice to hear everybody copping him to A.J. Brown uh, during the combine coverage this weekend. Uh, Brian Thomas, good enough RAS scores we talked about. Jalen Polk, a little bit better as well uh, than one would have thought. So he's good. Tez Walker, really good combine for him, uh, despite the fact that he was just an air yards merchant because of Drake May uh, being a, a willing, aggressive downfield thrower. <clears throat> but Devon Tez Walker, Tez Walker, uh, still a guy that tested good enough combine-wise that I think he will get draft capital. Uh, Brendan Rice, good to combine for him as well. Uh, more yellows than greens everywhere, but he's yellow everywhere. So kind of like his dad, I think people are going to fall in love with him a little bit with the Jerry Rice stuff. Roman Wilson tested well enough athletically, though I do think kind of got blown out of the water by some other guys. And Ricky Pearsall, uh, some big numbers for him, even though 24% uh, target route run rate at Florida and only a... Uh, he had a points 47 EPA, pretty good EPA, but not a great target rate for him uh, at college last year. All right, we're on the clock here. Latavian Sanders would be an okay pick, I think. God, wide receiver. I got to take more receivers. I'm taking Latavian Sanders here for one pick. He'll be my first tight end off the board. Uh, Darren Waller. I know Pete was talking about this on his stream today. Retirement rumors abound for Darren Waller. And then I think for this one, I think I'm going to go get Malik Washington. Uh, I am not a lover of Malik Washington, but again, he, <laughs> excuse me, he tested well enough athletically and the numbers are good enough for him. Uh, playing at Virginia, we'll see. Not Obviously not competitive target earning there for him necessarily, but 35% target route run rate for him. Only a 7.8 in 10 air yards per attempt. Uh, with Malachi Corley not testing out the combine, 
I think Malik Washington is going to win over some people that might have taken Corley. So uh, for me, Washington is just kind of a balance against the Corley I've been taking lately. Uh, though I didn't go crazy on Corley. I think I got enough Corley. Local Bills Media Blows. Let's go. Thank you for the super chat, Sammy. I appreciate that. All your super chats appreciated. Of course, hit the join button now below $4.99 a month. A great way to support the channel as well as get some more uh, content for yourself, especially in NFL season, but more to come. Uh, now the combine's over. And once I'm uh, able to breathe again, I'm going to really focus in on getting my... Uh, if you guys saw the Spags rankings last year in Football Outsiders, going to do the same thing again this year uh, where I'm going to rank the guys, try to make it so it's also exportable for underdog. It's the one change I have to figure out how to code um, right now. But basically, I'm going to do blurbs for every player uh, with some stats, some whatever. So I think that alone is going to be worth the $4.99 a month here. But, you know, you tell me, I guess. You gross, gross Malik Washington, all the rookie wide receivers have been steamed, so I don't hate it. I think that's really the main thing here is that everybody else is getting steamed, and he earned targets at a rate that it's him, it's Harrison, it's Johnny Wilson, and it's Malachi Corley, the only guys that got targets per outrun over 34%. So... That's the logic for him, but, you know, we'll see. Again, target competition for Virginia, not the best. Oh, I thought Theo Johnson. Yeah, Theo Johnson, one of the best tight ends ever in RES. Again, another guy, too, though, where the athletics were not that great for him, uh, or the athletics were great for him, rather, but the analytics were not that great for him. Uh, Theo Johnson, uh, let me see. He was at a 0.35 EPA per target, which is okay, but for, you know, comparison's sake, Brock Bowers, 0.52. Uh, Kate Stover, 0.43. Uh, ben Sinnott, he was better than Ben Sinnott, I guess, and EPA per target. Uh, but I think I like the style of play that Sinnott brings a little bit more. But Theo, with the athletics he had, he's going to go somewhere, I would think. Um, and I don't think he's like a Darnell Washington type, like where he's just, he, he's appropriately sized, not too big, uh, like Washington was. Ben Sinnott, though, uh, had over a nine RAS as well. Uh, the issue with Sinnott, I think, is that with the other guys, with there being enough freak athletes, uh, who's the other one? Tip, whatever the fuck his name is, I have to add him to my sheet. Uh, but there were enough freak athletes at the combine at tight end that I think a Senate is going to inherently come down a little bit. Um, I would guess it's obviously Bowers number one. I think Sanders is going to be number two. Theo slash Senate for number three, maybe, I think is the competition there. Uh, Jaheim Bell firmly with his measurables, like, uh, cemented himself as being an H back kind of guy. So I think Jaheim Bell, not somebody I would take too much a tight end. Tip Ryman. That's it. Tip Ryman. Oh, we're talking about tight ends. Yes. Uh, Gredo did have a very good combine as well. Gredo not available in the, or Grendo, right? I think it's Grendo, uh, did not have, uh, himself available in the big board player pool. So we're not worrying about him. Uh, he's also a little bit old, but Grendo, I think with what he did in the combine, you know, another guy, uh, top 10 performance of all time at running back. Uh, he probably is going to come up a good amount as well. Uh, when the big board is out. Uh, Sanders had a tough outing. Look, I think Senate should be tight end too, personally, in the draft board, but we, we've been there enough. Um, like Theo, if you're going to compare the numbers, like who earned more targets per out? Ben Senate, 26% to 21.4. Uh, pipe, well, blah, 21.5% for Theo Johnson. Uh, ben Senate, four catches the game compared to 2.6 for Theo Johnson. Uh, yards per out run, 2.3 for Senate compared to 1.7 for Theo Johnson. Uh, EPA, Theo won by a little bit, 0.35 compared to two, uh, 0.26. But what Sinek can do as a blocker, getting out into space, being able to run after the catch as well, um, 6.9 yards after catch for him compared to 5.4 for Theo. I just think Sinek's going to be able to do more, but obviously I've been in the bag for Sinek for a while. Tight end two, I think still a job that anybody could win. Uh, two, six, seven, one here. Do we just take the hope Darren Waller doesn't retire at this point? I feel like that's the best bet. Though actually... Fucking Davis Allen went too. God damn it. All right, Darren Waller. Don't don't quit on us, Darren. Don't quit on us. Noah Fant, the second year breakouts. This might be a four tight end build, actually. I'm gonna go Noah Fant for this pick. 2673. Really thought that Davis Allen would come back to me uh, as the guy who has Stafford and Cup, but Davis Allen goes, where'd he go? 191 to Dog Walker. All right. Well, fuck me then. All right. <laughs> Nothing you can do when a guy takes Davis Allen that ahead of where I was picking. So it is what it is. Uh, you must have missed his run yesterday. <laughs> that, guys, remember over the summer where Darren Waller was going to the 40s and 50s for a while because there were a couple of good camp reports about him? <laughs> like Darren Waller steam was a real thing. Uh, there was a point too where like I didn't have any Darren Waller and I was like, am I fucking up by not having any Darren Waller because everybody was so frothy for him? Uh, so if he retires, uh, definitely a bummer, but what are you going to do? RES matters, but I can think of many things more important. 
I think that's the biggest issue. And that's why guys like Lenny coming in, it's like, if if that's how you're going to view things. And also like Lenny's got a track record of being somebody we don't really like on the channel. So it is what it is. Uh, no respect to Lenny here. I hope comes back and learns to contribute positively. Uh, but like, you know, I think for that stuff, it's like, it doesn't change these guys and what they did in college, the results they got, the skill they showed, the things they did. Uh, but you obviously have to then grade that on the scale where the NFL does value the physical tools a little bit more. So like Troy Benson or Trey Benson, I think going to definitely go ahead of a, of a guy like Estime now. And I have to adjust for that in my draft capital and how I'm taking these guys in my own personal drafts because Benson's probably going to be a second, third rounder uh, at the worst, I would think. And Estime is probably now a fourth, maybe even a fifth rounder. And he's got to win that job in camp. But I think that's where, that's where the stuff that these guys showed in college is going to matter more. Like, yeah, Benson being, a burner, if, if especially if you were like a worse player, him being a burner doesn't matter because he's going to get into camp and it's going to be like, oh, they're going to see that you're actually not that great at a lot of facets of the game. And they're going to try to make you better for sure, but you're still going to see these things. You're going to go like, oh, this guy, let's put him behind Alvin Kamara for a year and see how it goes. Whereas a guy like Estime, my hope is that he goes into camp and he earns that role immediately because they're going to see him. And he's going to be one of those guys who are like, wow, you look at him on, uh, it's like assuming he's healthy and all that stuff. Like, you oh, he's like a, sh a bullet coming out of a gun. And, like, you hear those kind of reports because that's how these guys were positive contributors in college. And, like, that's the main thing to me. But, you know, that's what it is. Jacob Cowling's RES was not good enough, and I don't think he was a great prospect anyway. So, for me, uh, he's pretty much done so. A dog Walker takes bed sentence. So is Dog Walker also somebody in here? I feel like <laughs> seeing his draft trajectory here, uh, I think that, this is definitely somebody that feels like one of ours, but Ben Sinek goes pick 218. I was hoping to take him as my fourth tight end uh, because we wasted draft capital very late at tight end. We will not be going his way now. Audie Lacey, that's rude. That's rude. He wasn't fat. He has a great BMI. He just, yeah, a little slow. Lock for day three. Look. I, I agree with the draft capital part of it. Like I, I am, I think again, fourth, fifth rounder to me. I think people will still look at the tape and be impressed enough that somebody's gonna take a flyer on him. But you know, like the hope is again, what he did in college that he was good enough that that made him an above average producer. He's going to go to practice and he's going to show that again, he's going to win that role or when, you know, get a shot to earn a role over the course of a season. So that's the bet that I would willing to continue to make on him. Uh, but I like estimate is going to come down. I think Shipley, I don't even know why he's in here at all. Like with what the running backs did at the combine, Shipley didn't do anything, right? Unless I missed something there. Um, so I think he should be coming down a lot. Uh, wouldn't hate JJ McCarthy here as one pick. We have a two, six, seven, three. Don't think we need the seventh running back at this point. Do you think we need a fourth tight end though? Cause I really hate our tight end room. So I'm gonna take Greg Dulcich here in the hopes of a, a bounce back in Denver. And then JJ McCarthy is kind of interesting to me as a third QB in this build. Because I really feel okay about the wide receiver room for the most part. Don't know if there's anybody adding a ton of value uh, for me right now. Thrash had a very bad RES anyway, so we weren't going to go there. I'm going to add McCarthy. We're going to go three QBs, four tight ends. Bit of a weird build. Uh, yeah, didn't do any drills because of injury. So, like, again, why is he going higher in ADP? Just, the logic of some of the stuff here, don't take a guy ahead when he should be coming down. Uh, all right. JJ McCarthy, our final pick at QB, three, six, seven, four build. Caleb Williams, Matthew Stafford, JJ McCarthy, Kyron Williams, Devon A. Chan, Jalen Warren, Roshan Johnson, Marshawn Lloyd, and Audric Estime. The fire still burns for Audric Estime, even though I think he's probably going to come down to the 170s, 180s. Uh, Cooper Cup, Drake London, Terry McLaurin, Brian Thomas Jr., uh, Adonai Mitchell, Jameson Williams, and Leak Washington. Taking Thomas in the hopes, or Mitchell, I guess one of these guys, uh, being a downfield target for Caleb Williams, which is something that was rumored a lot. Uh, so we can have the combine for the Bears. Uh, that could work. Uh, McCarthy compare with Dulcich. That's a good point, too. Tight end, because we started tight end really late, and one guy might be retired, and one guy might be down in draft capital. Jatavian Sanders, Darren Waller, Noah Fant, Greg Dulcich. Just don't buy Peyton using Dulcich. He dead. Um, have we forgotten about the Joker role last year? That was such a big to-do <laughs> about Greg Dulcich. He's back in the Joker role. It's going to do well. Uh, oh, Shipley said he's the best all-purpose back in the class. Yes, because he looks like Christian McCaffrey. He must be. Um, I guess we're going to call this one early guys. Very efficient draft today. Uh, so I guess if there's any questions in chat. I could take them right now. You don't bring in Troutman, then Dulcich hurt all year and earn Peyton's trust. Wants his guys at eight zone. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, I think you can't write that off. And you know, uh, his own Mims was one of his own. I like he, he was brought in during Peyton's regime. So I don't think that's, I wouldn't view it that way personally, but you're obviously Tyler's a sharp guy. He can do what he needs to. 
Uh, all right, let's call it quits. Fuck it. Uh, guys, make sure you are subscribed uh, down below. Get Splash Plan that marched out of 4K subs to 5K subs to 10K subs. And I do the work even when I feel like ass. Literally feel awful. A little bit less awful today, but made sure that I did the prep work I had to do here because I want to be able to talk with these guys intelligently with you all. Uh, that's always the goal here on Splash Play. Monday to Friday, drafts at 11 a.m. We're always going to be here for you guys doing them. Underdog promo code Splash. Double your deposit up to 100 bucks on there and get a mystery pick them for your new sign-up. Stochastic, another big NBA slate today. I'll be playing it. I really do enjoy these uh, $4 entry fee. Uh, so basically 600 bucks to 150 max at Stochastic tools and data. I use my own projections, but they're built off of uh, Stochastic minute, uh, minutes projections. Then I use their sims. Uh, that's my process. And I really co-sign on it. I've been doing really well in the 150s besides Friday slate. I've been doing really well with them. Even did a MMA 150 max and profited over the weekend because their tools work really well in these sports. So check it out for yourself. Promo code Splash. Get 50% off of any package on Stochastic. All their sims, tools, all that. Probably is my baby. Check it out for yourself as well. I've seen a few signups coming in. Uh, get in the mix there. The best betting date in the world uh, from the winningest sports books around the world. That's what we track on there, allowing you to properly price bets and get good bets all day long. If you want to support Splash Play, that's a way to do it. And frankly, to build your bankroll for best ball. That's how I did it for drafting last year. It's what I'm doing again this year. Uh, so check it out for yourself. Probably.com slash subscribe. Use the promo code SPLASH on there, 50% off. Or get a seven-day free trial by searching probably on the App Store. Thanks to all these fine folks who helped me put on the show. You two can join them. $4.99 a month. Hitting that join button down below. And uh, reading of names coming up on Friday again, of course. And uh, yes, there we go. Chat's coming in. Appreciate all you guys being here as always. We'll be back for more tomorrow. So I'll see you guys then. Enjoy your days and go combine results. Go. And good luck. Bye.